Hey everybody, welcome back to Chicago Reacts. My name is Michael, I'm an actor here in the city of Chicago and I'm joined by the ever brilliant, the always talented, the one, the only. It's me, it's Zach, also an actor here in Chicago, soon to be worldwide. Mm -hmm. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at the insane story of Red Alert, terribly summarized by Alternate History Hub. Yeah, this one is suggested <laughs> by Kuya Kress, so thank you so much. Is that how you pronounce that? Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, it is. that is a Y. Yeah, that Kuya is Kress, a y. so thank Kuya you so Kress. much for the suggestion. Alternate History Hub, I don't think we've reacted to anything by them before, No, right? we have not, but last time we did watch a Bricky Red Alert video. I'm not sure if they're related, if they're relating to yeah. um, the Command & Conquer series, but... Mm. Either yeah. way, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. The yeah. suggestions never fail to disappoint. So. Yeah, so I'm excited. All right. Yeah, check out the description for all of our beautiful links to our beautiful sister channels and our Twitch channel. And uh, let's get let's jack dive into in. it. Let's jack in. What makes a man? Is it his wealth, his looks, <laughs> the love of his friends and family? Wrong. All those are wrong. There is only one thing that truly defines a man. I think it is related. It does look like it. I use alternate history in my videos to discuss real world questions. Makes us think about how we got to where we are today. Perspective on how events shape who we are as people, nations, cultures. This isn't one of those videos. We're going to talk about another part of alternate history. The part where giant Japanese samurai mechs invade Berlin, where Hitler is killed by a handshake, where cutscenes look like they are filmed for an 80s porno. When I was 10 I didn't care, it all blew my freaking mind. Command and Conquer. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. I don't blame you for not oh, knowing. We do. CNC we hasn't do. been that relevant yeah. this decade since EA drove the franchise into an early grave like it was gonna talk. Strategy game, mm -hmm. economy will be the focus. We right. have the harvester to start things off. Nothing too crazy yet. Nothing too crazy. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. <sighs> Space. I want to enlighten you on a blessed series that placed the seed of that alternate history. <laughs> you know, you that know. That was the most epic <laughs> dramatic pause. You know when Tim Curry can't hold it together. You know it's, it's oh my god. You're just actively laughing at himself as he's doing this. <laughs> <laughs> just having so much fun with it, like just being ridiculous. That's it's, it's Loki, hilarious. It's like Loki, my dream job. Yeah, yeah. Spies. <laughs> so good. Three <laughs> craziness into my young, impressionable mind. The Red Alert series. Is it realistic? No. Does it have to be? Of course not. This isn't really a video about lore, since there really isn't a lot of it. Or maybe I just want to talk about it. It's my channel. Who cares? Most people agree World War II wasn't the best time, and in a post-war 1946, in the middle of the desert, the man himself, Albert Einstein, wanted to live in a world where such a tragedy never occurred. And so he came up with an idea, a machine to travel through time. And he built that machine to travel back in time to undo the future that is a coup, or uh, Hitler. He goes back in time and kills Hitler before he can mess everything up. But Cody, if he went back in time to kill Hitler and everything changed, then why would he ever need to go back if he came from a present that never heard of Hitler? It's a strategy game from the 90s, don't think about it. Because Hitler now never came to power, instead of Nazi Germany waging war against everyone causing World War II, the Soviet Union decides to invade all of Europe. Each Command & Conquer game has multiple endings because you can play as both sides. And since there's multiple games, well, some endings just aren't going to be canon. If you play as the Soviets, then hot dog congrats, baby! You get to lead the invasion of Europe. 
country by country using your strangely advanced technology like iron curtains and Tesla coils as you slowly make your way to stop Brexit. Along the way, your contemporaries will die, but because you are the main player, you survive Stalin's wrath, drunkenness, way with women, by playing the game well. Oh, Stalin, you have such a way with words. By the conclusion, you have successfully conquered Britain. The USSR now controls all of Europe. As for Stalin, oops. Well, uh, what about the Allied campaign? <laughs> oops. Oops. As commander, you successfully beat back the Soviets, using their own weapons against them, preventing them from bombing Britain. You've seen enough of these resistance storylines, you can kind of get the deal. Poor Stalin, boy just can't catch a break. There really isn't much to be said because the plot doesn't really matter. Money. The state of the world is either going to be allies win or Soviets win. But the games do pick a favorite because you can't just have the Soviets win. That would be boring. This is Dugan. Hey Alex, it's me, Reggie. CGI and... It's been 30 years since the end of the war, and what do you know, we're going with the Allied victory plot. Which means this is how Stalin died, and the Allies replaced him with a puppet called Alexander Romanov. If you can't tell by the name, he's a descendant of the Romanovs that the Soviets overthrew in the first place. To introduce you to my little friend, this is Sam. Well, wouldn't you know it, the Soviets invade again and the US president <laughs> finds out in a pretty casual way. We're supposed to be allies, you maniac. I'm the one that put you into office. Listen, very carefully. I am not your pet, Mr. President. We Romanovs have our legacy to consider. I don't give a wooden nickel about your legacy. Yeah, I'd react somewhat mildly. Did he say wooden nickel? Wooden nickel. That's what he said. What? I've never heard that before. Nickel. What? I don't you know, what? I don't even know what Where that does is. that phrase come from? Let us know in the comment section down below cuz that is insane. I've never heard that before. Wooden nickel. I don't give a wooden nickel. I'm going to start saying that more often. On, on stream? On stream? Just like, any just in my life. <laughs> I wouldn't give a wooden nickel for that. I'll be annoyed finding out the U.S. is getting invaded on two fronts as well. I don't give a wooden nickel about your legacy. <laughs> the U.S. try to use their nukes, except they can't because Yuri the Psychic. SpongeBob? Yes, there are psychics, don't question it. Yuri yeah. gives the top secret Those nuclear really bases good. a call and brainwashes them to do Edit this. Or oh, they'll explode under. The silo doors are closed! And thus begins our conflict. Alright, you know the drill. Two campaigns, two outcomes. Let's do it. Well, uh-oh, what's a good old boy to do? The Reds are on your shore, Commander. After taking a few places back from the Soviets, including the Statue of Liberty, which really has no strategic importance, that old scoundrel Yuri uses mind control on the President and the top generals. The war is over. What I've come to realize is that the commies and us want the same thing. You know, female I don't think we need any more of that. So how'd Yuri do it? Well, he created a psychic beacon, which does pretty much what it sounds like. They build one in Chicago. Gotta go stop them. Ah, uh, darn. The United States was Romanov's first target. Join our fight, <laughs> or we will not be his last. So after the European powers, <laughs> somehow not under control of the Soviets, even though the Soviets now control the US, decide, hey, maybe we should help. They hop on board with the Americans. The best way to take the Soviets down is to chop the head off, of course. And guess who's going to help with that? I have something to, how shall we say, even the score, yeah? Guess that time traveling added 20 years <laughs> to his life and made him look like Lou Albano. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. So you take DC back, retake some places in the US, and now are tasked to help Einstein as he creates a chronosphere. Pretty much the same machine as last game, but this time it can transportate anything. Plot twist, you transport your forces into Moscow, capture the- Did he say transportate? 
Did he say? Did he say transportate? I heard transportate. This <laughs> time it can transportate anything. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, it is a yeah. fancier version of transportate. See, transport, it, it, transport, transportation. Yeah, it's, Trans- the, it's the short version of transport. <laughs> Albert Einstein. I'm, we got I'm just learning so many new words. <laughs> transportate. Wood, wood nickel? nickel. I wouldn't give a wooden nickel. The city and sneaky Romanov himself. So what about the Soviet campaign? Well, there isn't much different, except you conquer a little bit of Europe, have a little fun in Paris and Tesla coils, Yuri overthrows Romanov, leading to you, the commander, now fighting against him. In the end, Yuri is defeated, nuked. All that is left is his brain, for some reason. But hey, at least now that everyone else is gone, you are the sole leader of the Soviet Union. Congrats, comrade. What the devil is going on, Lieutenant? He surfaced, Mr. President. I'm sure you all recognize this man. This is an expansion that takes place after the Allied victory. And it's... It's something. Let's just go through this in a nice, neat order. Old Yuri is up to his old shenanigans again. After building mind control devices across the entire world, he basically brainwashes everybody. So what do you do? I believe we can use it to transport your forces backwards in time. Pull an endgame, of course. Your forces travel back in time to the start of Red Alert 2 when the- Einstein's looking a little like, uh, like Uncle Vernon. <laughs> From, from, from me. <laughs> he's looking a little bit like Uncle Vernon from uh, Harry Potter, yeah, <laughs> when yeah. he, especially when he's like in that face like this. <laughs> just a touch. Yeah. The Soviets are invading. But Yuri is enough. still brainwashing everybody, but using Hollywood and subliminal messages. He's begun to use the media to spread subliminal propaganda. Here's a sample with the subliminal mind control properties filtered out. Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it, so you don't have to. Turns out knockoff Bill Gates is in trouble because Yuri is threatening to nuke him unless he gives him money. Lou Albano is involved again. The war ends with the Soviets and Americans banding together to fight Yuri. Yuri is captured in his secret Antarctica base, and bing bang boom, he's defeated. Thanks to you, Commander. He won't be able to mind control a fly. Oh yeah, then the timelines merge for some reason. The Soviet campaign isn't that different, except Yuri is defeated by the Russians, and you, the commander, are the sole leader of the Soviet-dominated world. Yuri tries to escape in his own time machine, and is ate by a T-Rex. Oh! Thanks for coming, everybody! Hello. Good Hello. night! Hello! You cannot be serious. Come, Comrade General. A new world order awaits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it's the end of Red Alert 2, or 1. Really any allied campaign in this timeline, and the Soviets are once again on the brink of defeat. What's a leader to do? What's a Tim Curry to do? Simple. Time machine. Hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. Pull an Einstein <laughs> and travel back in time to kill Einstein. Didn't see that coming, oh did you, old man? You see, Einstein was what allowed the Allies to have their powerful weapons, their nukes, their transportation machines, their diabetes. If Einstein is gone, then the Soviets will have an advantage, and in no way would anything possibly go wrong we created weebs. Yes, that's right. In a world without atomic bombs, somehow the Japanese Empire was able to rise out of horrendous, crushing defeat to become the Empire of the Rising Sun, even though the Soviets invading Manchuria was actually the main reason for their surrender, not the bombs, but that's okay, no nukes means anime mechs. All right, why not? Thanks, Tim Curry, you ruined everything. Our situation is shockingly grim. So yeah, there's three campaigns in this game. All of them are not that deep, considering a certain company took over, and there's one more campaign now. Whoop. Soviets are in control of Europe, and Britain, once again, is the last bastion. <laughs> Gotta just oh, go with what you man. know, I guess. 
Typical events happen, you once again beat back the Soviets, this time with measles, and the most realistic part of this whole franchise, the Allies and Soviets set aside their differences to fight against anime. Japan is soon pushed <laughs> back. President Ackerman, and yes, this is J.K. Simmons' most yes. defining role. Vote for me if you want to live. Goes full Her helicopter mama. rides and oh betrays the Soviets. Oh my god. None of you have the guts to do what needs to be done, so I'm gonna wipe those Soviets off this earth myself. Using a laser coming out of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <poor Teddy. laughs> oh yeah, so allies fight amongst each other yes. and Jenny McCarthy <laughs> kills the president. I think this she had a child insane. sneeze on him. Like, I, well, we've uh -oh, already the Soviets... seen how insane this is, but it's still, like, I know. <clears throat> I know exactly what to expect and I still think it's insane. It's insane, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we watched the, the Bricky <laughs> review of Red Alert 3. So we're coming into oh, this, man. like, especially Red Alert 3, like, knowing a little something, and it's still, it blows my mind still, like, <laughs> oh my god, like, what is this insanity? It, it feels like something out of Austin Powers, like, here's a laser coming out of the Abraham Lincoln's forehead. Right, right. Oh, also, just J.K. Simmons just going, vote for me. If you want to live. <laughs> like, <it's>, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it honestly feels akin to political ads today. <laughs> it does. It does. Uh. <laughs> Betray you anyway. After some transportation into Leningrad, gee, where did I see this before? Both leaders are imprisoned in ICE, and the vice president of the U.S. takes over. I will take the reins of this great country, and together we will march forward into a bright and prosperous future. You done good, Hasselhoff. You done. Ow. Ow. <laughs> so Ackerman's like little bout of patriotism transcends I timelines, I guess, and there's still a war on three fronts. Somehow Japan has a front in Leningrad and Moscow. Flying fortresses beat geography and logistics, I guess, but moving on. After some shenanigans, some betrayal, some fun times, the Soviets decide that they need to assassinate the Emperor. Did you think it would be so easy? But George Takei isn't going down without a fight. And then, the greatest betrayal of all. Thank you, Commander, for so thoroughly and brutally dispatching my enemies. But now I'm afraid you have outlived your usefulness. I thought we were friends, Tim Curry. I did everything for you. And this is how you repay me? Leaders betraying everyone really seems to be the running thing in this game. <laughs> well, Tim Curry is beat on his real-life volcano fortress. <laughs> oh, this is so my freaking. timeline! And all is resolved. Huh. That was easy. Once again, you control the Soviet Union. But oh no, here comes the... They win all these campaigns. What the oh army? <laughs> That was fun. That was really wild to see how it evolved. And yeah, that was always <clears throat> fun to see Tim Curry and J.K. Simmons and George Takai being insane. <laughs> like the fact that that exists <clears throat> is just a wonderful thing. Yeah, I mean, I would love to know how many like games they they sold, especially back in '96, '98, because. For them to continuously like build on a franchise and a series in a way where they could be so bold, but also know that they're gonna make money. Like that's we just need more of that in today's society, you know? Yeah. We need more. But then Red Alert like, 3 wasn't until 2008, right? <clears throat> right, right. So it was when Which I, is like sooner and like it, not that long ago. I'm I mean, trying I'm trying to remember too when um when EA took over, I don't remember if they, do you remember in Bricky's review, did they buy the rights to that? Or I don't know, they just had them or what? But, um, okay, yeah. so we have something uh, pulled up now for Command and Conquer, Red Alert. Uh, it sold 347,844 units um, during 1996. So over, over, and, and then, then 
which was the seventh best-selling computer game in 96. And then Red Alert 2. Um, oh, no. Red Alert still won. Um, so it got almost a million sales. copies yeah, sold, sold in, uh, by in its 99. Lifetime. Yeah. 17th best selling computer game ever released since in, or since January 1983. Nice. Okay. That's pretty huge. Yeah, that is pretty big. Um Yeah, just I'm just trying to think like could you think of a series or a video game right now that like would have such an outlandish idea and then like the developer continue to make games and content for them? Like without it being you know, I mean, I feel like I don't know. There's some wild games out there. I think the specific style of humor, like the campiness of it, yeah. is kind of unique. I mean, there is like, I think, like, in GTA, like, all of the different, like, customizations that you can do, or really right. any of, like, the FPS online games. Right, Like, right. there's so many, like, wacky customizations that you can do that I feel like you have that sort of goofiness, but it's more like player generated as opposed to the producer going, we're going to create this insane, these insane clips that exist within it. Right. Um, like in GTA, you create your own canon, so to speak. Yeah. But, but for I mean, them to... I will say It Takes Two has a little bit of that campy uh, uh, main character with the yeah. like the book that you meet right away. Yeah. So... It's not to that degree, and it's very different, but, yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know if anything quite like that, like, quite overt <laughs> would play very well Yeah, I today. mean, Like, it's almost like uh, something you point to laugh at. Right, right. So I feel like. I mean, like, even remember when we watched um, Max Orr's review of Devil May Cry? And, like, yeah. just how wild that was, like, the weird enemies and, like, the weird. But it's like that is. That is like, that was, I don't know, like, that's like very candy, but like in a very, very, very different way. But still, yeah. people like suck themselves into that canon and just love it. But like, yeah, a game like making fun of itself, but also like yeah. being a real game. It's just, yeah. it's really cool. You just don't see as much of it as. as well, again, I feel like, like you, you don't get those big risks anymore from mainstream producers especially in the movie side of things too it's so competitive or like but maybe more in like the indie realm there's yeah. wackier stuff like that yeah but yeah 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 command and conquer what yeah are, what let us know what you think what is your <clears throat> about this crazy journey in the comment section down below yeah uh, let us know if there's anything else you think we should check out hit that like button subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything else and we'll see you next time on Chicago React.